You have played in many countries before. In which country was the cultural difference to your home country, home country the greatest? Yeah, I played in many, many countries. The greatest uh, difference, uh, I can say, maybe uh, South Korea and Japan. Also, South Korea is much different than Japan and vice versa. But, um, you know, religiously also there are differences like Turkey, because it's Muslim country compared to Catholic country as Croatia. Uh, Japan and South Korea are different. And then Russia is different. I also played in Russia. But the biggest one was definitely South Korea and Japan for different reasons. But uh, they really, um, it really helped me. I didn't take it as a negative thing. Like, yeah, players, uh, when they go pro professional, they try and they travel in all these countries and, and they try to make it the same as their home country. And it becomes a negative experience for them, okay? I took all these, uh, all these experiences and all, the, all this diversity as something very positive. Bec and at the end it was very positive for me because different like for example like when you go to Turkey it's a different it's totally different country also religiously but it really helped me I, I try to look at things from their point of view I try to respect how they respect each other and it really helped me as a person and for example Japan and, and South and South Korea they changed me as a as a human being first they changed me as a person and then they changed me as a player I cannot say I'm the same as them. I am not, but and I will never be. And for me, some things are also. It doesn't mean that everything is good. You know, you need to be able to differentiate what's actually good, what's not. Like, someone is doing a bad thing, even if he's a good person, you need to tell them it, this is a bad thing. So I'm not. I'm not idealizing, right? I'm not going there and being like, oh, this is a perfect country. Of course, it's not. Every country has its positives and negatives, but. Uh, my experience in South Korea and Japan really changed me as a, as a person. I was totally different person after that, but also I was totally different athlete. And it, it made me learn a lot of things about myself, but I gave it the opportunity. You know, I, gave, I took it everything as a positive. And then when negative things happen, you deal with them. But you allow, the most important thing in your life is when something positive happens, you allow it to come. You can, you can make something even better later. What criteria does a club have to fulfill for you to choose it? This this really depends on what stage of my career. When I was very young, like you are, I really just tried to be the best I can and I was not really sure if anyone, if I can go and play somewhere, no? The first moment I understood that I, I'm, I have quality to go and play somewhere, of course, it was when I started to play for national team. But also when you play for national team, you're still not the best. So you're still wondering if, or oh, maybe, can I go? I would like to go, for example, to play in Italy or somewhere, but I'm not sure if I will be able to, no? The, the only criteria was like, if they want me, <laughs> okay? If they want me and I can play, I'm coming. And literally my first criteria until I was 20, 22, 23 years old, because already I was very talented and kind of famous when I was 16, 17. So for me, it's, everything started very early, but, my only criteria until 23 was like, if I can play, I'm coming, you know? Yeah, so it's just opportunity to, to get better and opportunity to learn more. This was my only criteria. After that, when I understood like, oh, I'm coming to Italy and I'm being one of the better players, okay, then now money is important. Then you think about money and okay, I always, always have an agent, I have a manager, so we kind of talk about money, but I never really cared about money until that point, you know. And I was like, oh, but this is the moment where I understand I'm better than someone, and then I understand, oh, maybe I should get more money, and stuff like this. But with money comes more responsibility, then you need to be better. Then we, when you need to be better, you need to have better training, better off-season training, better nutrition. Then you start to think about, oh, who my physiotherapist should be. Then you start to think of, oh, who will my physical physical coach will be? And things like that. And then you start to think of some mental preparation and stuff. So everything is going up, up, up. So my criteria is always how my career progressed. My criteria to actually go to a club were, was different. But the bottom line was the, the main idea for me, it was always if it's a good project or not. If it's something that motivates me, 
okay, we can do this together, we will be better. I will always pick one club over the other, even if it's similar money or even sometimes less money. I wouldn't care because I feel like, oh, I want to go to this project instead of this project. I don't care it's more money there. I will go here because I think I can do better. First, I can do better there. Second, I think we'll have better team. Third, I think we work better because in professional sports, don't have, don't have a continuity of work of high quality work, you will not, you are not getting a better player. If you are not getting a better player in one year difference, no one wants you anymore. So you need to be better, 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 and then maybe the best one day. And in order to be that, you need to always have high level of good work. In that terms, this is how I choose my teams, where I would have the best chance of success, where I would work the best, where I had the best surrounding, team and physicians and coaches and everything where I know that I can communicate well when it's healthy. This is how I would choose. And then money, of course, is important. But even if there were some situations over my career where I would, this one place would get me much more money and I would not take it. Because my idea of being a professional is being the best I can be. And then everyone has different idea. There are players who want to just play for money and it's okay. But my idea was different, so I respected my idea. And uh, I always wanted to work on the highest level, play on the highest level and be on the highest level possible. And I always choose projects like this. Where and when was the most difficult time in your volleyball career and how did you overcome it? First time I leave, I leave my home, I was 15, almost 16 years old, like 15 and a half years old. It was the most difficult time. Because I totally like feeling comfortable living in my home and then all of a sudden I'm totally uncomfortable and everything is new and I don't know nothing, I don't know no one. This was for me absolutely was the hardest time. But everything on the other side was going great. So like I was not pushing nothing, but this thing that was going great with my career and everything it was pushing me to come out of this, you know, feeling bad and doing everything like halfway and not feeling so good but it's normal not to feel good when you something drastically changes in your life it's just how you react to it later how you you cannot be so hard on yourself you know you need to give yourself a chance and this was for me by far the most difficult time to understand that it's okay not to feel good then if i show up every day and work and just start just show up and start and I do my best, not my very best, but my best that I can do that day, then it's enough. And then slowly, 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 all of the sudden, I was one of the better players in Croatia. You know, I don't know how, but it happened because I had a lot of talent. And in that one year, that for me was like dark year, everything was going good. But I just, I just, the only thing I really did consciously, I just showed up every day. I did my work, I did my best, it was, I didn't feel the best. I, I didn't feel like it, my, it was my very best, like my 100%. But in this moment, that, this is the only 100% I can give. And it ended up being okay. So sometimes when you're in total crisis, it's okay. Everyone is in total crisis, sometimes in their lives. But the only thing you need to do is show up and do your job. And then slowly things will improve, but only if you give yourself a chance. I think this was my hardest situation and I learned a lot from it because later I had more hard situations in professional clubs when I was earning a lot of money and I had a lot of responsibility and I handled it the same way and everything went perfect, you know? Because this means actually being professional means showing up and doing your job. But you need to first, first step is to get out of the bed and then second step is to get out of the house. Third step is to get into in the, the gym and you show up on time, however you are, in what condition you are, doesn't matter, but you show up for your team. And you do the work and everything else will kind of do its own course, you know. Um, how did you deal with the role as one of the best outside hitter in the world? Did you feel more pressure or did it just motivate you even more? When I started this path of going up, 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 uh, I felt pressure. But then in one point I, I came to South Korea and um, like I, I felt like I hit, I hit my limit. And then um, all of a sudden like 
something exploded inside of me, you know, like you crash the limit. I always felt very privileged and very happy for what I'm doing. And the moment I realized that I need to say thank you for that I'm able to do this sport and that I'm able to do this and inspire some other people, uh, for me it became huge motivation. And that moment I was not one of the best in the world, but that was mo the moment when I started to become. And later, when you're actually the best, there is no pressure in terms of being the best. There is pressure of your own expectations, what you want from yourself. But for me, it was just huge motivation because every day I wanted to get more like better and better and better. And it was a passion for me. And every day I would come up to the gym and I would find new motivation, new thing I need to work on, new thing to get better at. And it was like uh, reading a book, what's on the next page. And I always was looking for the next page. I want to find new thing. I want to learn new thing. I want to do better in this thing. And for me, it became like a habit, like a way of life. And all the time, it's huge for me. It was a huge, huge motivation. And it was actually a happy thing. Because pressure, it's a negative thing when you think about pressure. But when you think about motivation in terms of knowledge and in terms of what you can achieve, uh, what your body can do and what mentally you can do in volleyball court, it's a happy thing. And uh, for me, it was like reading a book. Okay, what's on the next page? What tomorrow I want to do something new. I want to do, and the day after tomorrow, I want to do another thing new. And I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn. I learn many things two, three times in a different way over my career. And also I learned about the uh, volleyball game two, three times. I changed my idea about volleyball, how I should play, how th what I think the best team should play, whatever. And there are many different points of view, what you, how you can think about it. And, but it doesn't come just from thinking. You need to allow yourself to develop and then it will come naturally because volleyball will lead you if you choose volleyball, it will lead you and you will get to know and understand who you are. And I think that's important. Did you also have experience with difficult coaches, teammates? How did you deal with them? Many, many experiences, many difficult people. Also, you can ask someone else and also I was difficult. It's, it's just from point of view. Everyone has their own, um, their own reasons. The most important thing is communication. And if you give a person a chance, they will show you how they really feel. 99% uh, of the time, these are all good people. 1% of the time, they are shitty people. And 99% of the time, you fix everything with honest communication. Because when you're in one team, you want to best for the team. And you can have different points of view. And it's allowed. It's not, not everyone can have the same point of view. And if you deal with the honest and good person, you fix it with communication, you fix it with hard work, you fix it yourself together. But there is always that 1% shitty people and uh, you need to stand your ground. I, I, always, I always had a very big belief in myself and I always had very firm, I stood my ground very firmly. I would give these people a lot of chances. If they don't show me they're good people, then I would act accordingly. And sometimes that was not very pleasant, but I learned over the years to, to deal them, with them efficiently. But the most important thing is never to abandon. If you feel you're honest, don't ever lie to yourself. This is a good thing, you know? This is how I felt. And I, I, don't, I cannot say I was right or wrong. I don't feel like I was wrong. It's just like you will always understand there are some shitty people in life. It's okay. They're like that. It's not your fault. It's their fault. You know, it's also sometimes not their fault. They're like this because they choose to be like this. They don't know any better. It's okay. You move on and you focus on positives. This is the most important thing because thinking about negatives, it's always ends up being negative, you know, and you cannot change it. You cannot change someone else, but you can show with example how it's supposed to be done. And then if they're smart, over time, if they're lucky, they will start to copy you. Because sometimes people just are afraid, they're sad, they don't want to understand. Not everyone is in the same space mentally. Not everyone starts with the same idea like you have. Not everyone 
come from the same house in this gym. So the points from which each person starts is totally different. And you, you, just, you don't need to respect it or anything, but you need to accept it because otherwise it, you will have, it, it will start to affect you negatively. What would you have liked to know before signing your first professional contract? Actually, I was very lucky with my first contracts. I kind of was going in the wrong way and then something happened and everything went perfectly. You know, I was more lucky than smart. Before signing my first contract, I think the most important thing as an idea, just as an idea, is to understand that not everyone is thinking like you are. Not everyone is the same level of honesty as you are. Not, every, not some people are cheaters also, you know, like you need to understand there are different kinds of people in this world. I would have liked to be able to understand it and be ready for it. But something, sometimes you, are, you cannot, you just learn going. F from a um, volleyball point of view, before signing my first contract, I would have liked to know exactly what does it mean to be a professional volleyball player. That it doesn't matter how you show up in practice, if you don't have a good game, you, you, you will be responsible for that. That uh, your quality is determined always only in the court, not how good you are, smart you are or whatever. So actually it depends only on you and what you do as a professional, what you do in, with volleyball. So it's a whole different level of understanding and thinking compared to the, this kind of training that you have here, this kind of support that you have here. Because with professionals you only get support if you're one of the best. Eh? Everything else, th there is another, another one coming that wants to put you down. And this is the reality of any kind of professional work, not only volleyball. It's the reality of it. But some things it's better not to know before. <laughs> some things it's okay to find out on your way, you know, when, when, when you decide. Because you cannot be ready beforehand. For some things you are ready when you're ready. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what happens, what, what kind of preparation you have. When you're mentally ready, when your body is ready, some, some things happen, you know. Certain things you need to let it be and let it go and make it happen, you know. It, let it happen and treat it accordingly. But at the end, the most important thing is as, as people who you are. If you know who you are as people, then everything else will become more easy. Because at the end, you only need to be true to yourself. You need to value what you have inside in terms of who you are. And if you lie to yourself, then of course you're going to go the wrong way for yourself, no? But if you're true to who, to who you are, then you will go on your right way. You're different people, okay? And it's okay. It's not, it's not a copy-paste, oh, you need to go to South Korea to succeed. No, you can stay here and be... It just it happened for me in this way and I'm very lucky, but this is my life, my way, and you have your life and your way. But the bottom line is, if you're, if you're honest with yourself, you will be okay. If you're not, you will not be okay. Uh, volleyball life, professional life, or your own life, it doesn't matter what you do, it will challenge you like this. Every time something will happen and be like, oh, maybe I can do it this way. And then everything in, in, inside of you tells you don't do it and you still do it. It's, of course it's wrong. And you need to have courage to, it takes a lot of courage to say, this is okay for me, this is not okay for me. It takes a lot of courage and it starts with you. I think this is the most important way to succeed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Welcome. you.